What's up guys, in this video we're going to be covering a repo that allows one to split large language models such as GPTJ over multiple GPUs. This repo is called Parallel Formers and it's based on Megatron LM and it's designed to make model parallelization very easy. And after using it myself, I can confirm that it, it does only take a few lines of code to get things up and running. It's very user friendly. But you may be asking yourself, why would I even want to ever run a language model over multiple GPUs? Well, let's say you have two 3060s, and those two 3060s have 12 gigabytes of VRAM. As we've known from looking at my previous videos, that's not really enough to run a large language model such as GPTJ. Currently, using a single GPU, we're limited to just the 3090 when it comes to consumer GPUs. But through the use of this repo, that situation is no longer a roadblock for using large language models for inference. Two or more GPUs containing a smaller VRAM buffer can now be used to run large language models. However, I would be remiss if I did not go over a few issues I have found already in using this repo. For example, in my computer, I have a 3060 and a 3090. The 3090 alone is perfectly suitable for running a large language model such as GPTJ, but there is no reason why I couldn't still use this repo and split it over to the 3060 and the 3090. However, if you have a GPU that can load and run a large language model on its own, it's best to not split it as you only have a performance penalty in terms of speed and in my subjective opinion, accuracy by splitting up the model. There's also an issue that I found that I've opened up an issue for on the repo. And that is when uh, I split the model, in this case GBTJ over the 3060 and the 3090. There seems to be an issue when I generate too many tokens, such as 100 or so, that it will lead to the 3090 or the 3060, in this example of the photo, the 3090, will have 100% utilization and the other GPU will have around 10. And what this does, it'll just keep on hanging and you'll never get the results. I'm not quite certain what causes this issue, but it may be due to a few things such as it could be a race condition where the 3090 finishes too quickly for the 3060 and due to a bug in the code, it leads to it hanging. It might also be due to the fact that the GPUs have a different amount of VRAM and it may be trying to over allocate on the 3060 as this issue is more likely to occur with more tokens. I will be sure to demo this software as well as this issue that I've discovered, but I just wanted to point out some of the issues before we got too deep into the video. If anyone watching has two or more GPUs that are the same type, such as 23080s, 21080ti's, or whatever, I'd be very interested in hearing your experiences with this software. Does using the same GPU with the same speed and VRAM size prevent any of these issues from occurring? Please let me know. Now that those issues are out of the way, let's get started with installing and using Parallel Formers. So as the repo says here, you can install it by simply typing pip install Parallel Formers and it'll install Torch and other dependencies that are needed. However, doing it this way does not install CUDA Toolkit, so we're going to add an additional step to installing Parallel Formers. As is common for my videos, we'll be using Anaconda. So we'll start out by creating the environment. We'll do conda create dash n, the name, and then we're gonna do Python 3.8. And we'll hit yes. And that, and that is done. We now need to go ahead and enter that environment. So do conda activate parallel formers. And now we're in there. And then we need to do pip install parallel formers as the documentation says. So pip install parallel formers. And uh, as I said, it will install its own version of PyTorch and things like that, but that will not have Kudo Toolkit and so we'll go ahead and fix that after it's done installing what it needs to install. So at this point, Parallel Formers is installed, but as I said, it won't work with CUDA. So let's go ahead and fix that. And to do so, let's go to the PyTorch Getting Started page. We want the stable 
uh, 1.10.1 version. We're on Linux, Conda, and we want CUDA 11 for um, RTX 30 series. So we're going ahead and copy this, and we will paste it into here. And once this is installed, um, the issue with it not supporting CUDA will be done, and we are ready now to use Parallel Formers. So here's a bit of code I wrote to demo GPT models, and we'll use it here to demo Parallel Formers. Uh, I'll quickly walk through which uh, each part does, but this code will be in the description linked in a GitHub, so feel free to check that out. The first important part are the lines here. This just selects what model we'll load and use. So right now we're going to use GPTJ, but by commenting this and uncommenting either one of these, we can switch between what model we want to test with parallel formers. They all work with some variation of the issue I've mentioned, but they all work. Here we can then see an argument parser, and it just sets some default values that you can change later on, but this will make it so you don't have to change it. And so the minimum output will be 10, max will be 50, temperature will be 0.8, the top K will be 50, the top P will be 0.95, and the number of outputs will be 1. These aren't necessarily the best, but these are just the defaults that I set for this tool. The next important part of this code would be the lines here. So from line eight, from parallel formers, where we import parallelize, and how we use this is just like normal, we use the model from using auto model and the model name here. We get the tokenizer same way. We ensure that the model is in eval mode, even though it almost certainly already is. Um, and then at that point, we just call parallelize with the model that we loaded the number of GPUs, in my case two, but you may have more. And then since the models are large, that's kind of the whole point, we want to convert their weights to floating point 16. So we set that value to true. And at this point, we can use the model um, almost completely normal. And I'll go over that further down in the code. So the next important parts of the code would be the code here. And all this does is prepares the string input to be given to the model. And it allows one to override the default values that were up here if they wish. And if they don't give a valid input, we will just use the default ones. So that just allows uh, the tool to be nice to use. So the last important part of the code would be this part here. So just like normal, we tokenize the input. And what's really nice is the code to actually generate the output doesn't need to be changed at all. So we can still just do model generate and have our arguments passed in. And we still get the same result as if it was on a single GPU. So this repo is very nice. This uh, paralyze is very nice that it doesn't require much code changed at all. So let's go ahead now and demo this. As I said already, we're using GPTJ and we have NVIDIA SMI running so we can see the um, model working on both GPUs. And let's go ahead and run this. So do Python main. Oops. And we'll wait for it to load. And as we can see now, the model has loaded on both GPUs. We can see that the 3060 has a bit more VRAM used up, but that's also because it's powering the monitors. But we can see that the model is now split between both GPUs. So for the demo, I'm going to give the prompt, hello, my name is Blake and, and we'll see how it works. So do that. We're going to keep it at the default, which is 50 for now, and one output. And we'll see the activations happening on the GPU and the memory going up. And it's working so far, and here we go. So I'll go ahead and let you pause and read that if you wish, but I think the output's fairly decent. So let's try it with now 100 tokens. So to do it with 100 tokens, we'll go ahead and hit enter, and we'll give it the same prompt. Minimum, we'll keep the same. We'll do maximum, set that to 100. We'll keep everything else the defaults. And it doesn't look like we're having any issues as of now, and it works. So again, 100 tokens, still working fine. Let's go ahead and try it again, but try to get the issue that I mentioned in the beginning of the video. 
The issue that I mentioned occurs for both GPT-J and GPT-NEO models, but for whatever reason, it seems to occur more often on the GPT-NEO 2.7b model. To demo it, I'm going to switch over to that model. So we'll go ahead and do this by commenting out this and commenting that, hitting save. And I'll bring back up the terminals and we'll run it again. So now this is the 2.7b model. And we can see the model is now loaded. It takes up less VRAM as the model is smaller, which makes sense. So we'll give it the same prompt and I'm gonna go rapid fire at 50 token increments until it breaks just to demo it. So let me flake. And there's no issue. So let's do 100 now. No issue again. One, 150. Still no issue. 200. Again, no issue. 250. Again, working fine. 300. Still good. 50. And the issue here is here. So here we can see that the utilization on the 3090 is at 100% and the 3060 hangs around 10 to 20%. And this will never finish. I can let it run for minutes at a time and it will never finish. I'm not sure why. I think it may be a race condition as I've said previously, but I'm not quite sure. So we can actually go higher on my hardware on GBTJ without issues than we can on GBT Neo 2.7B. Again, if you have hardware that is similar such as several models of the same GPU, I'd be curious to know if you had the same issue. But I just wanted to point this out that this is not a perfect solution. There are issues and this is more for just messing around with if you uh, don't have a 3090 but may have two 1080s or such. So that's where I'm going to end today's video. I hope you found this helpful, especially if you are a person that has multiple GPUs with smaller VRAMs and could not run these bigger models as now you can. If you liked the video, please consider leaving a like and subscribing. I cover a wide variety of topics in the tech area, but mainly focused on NLP models and crypto projects. And I plan on covering more topics relating to AI, crypto, and tech in general in the future. So if that's something you're interested in, don't forget to subscribe. Also a reminder of the Discord channel. We have a healthy small community over there where we discuss a variety of topics but mainly topics related to GBT and other NLP models. Thank you so much for watching and please have a great day.